just to put it in context, and I think this really weaves us well into uh, discussing um, our bodies and, and drugs, um, specifically uh, KFC and weed. Um, it's just to kind of talk a little bit about the history of the counterculture movement. Um, you can really look to, you know, the early 1950s and look at, like, the beat generation as, like, the precedent to all hippie culture. So I always will just kind of, like, sit on Jack Kerouac um, when I talk about that. And this, you know, the, the, the beat culture, you know, beat generation was really, like, um, an exploration of self, sexuality, of drugs, of opiates, uh, weed, you know, of traveling, of freedom, freedom of body, freedom of expression, uh, free art, you know, uh, all, all those things. And it was a group of, you know, poets, art artists of various types, musicians. Uh, they enjoyed jazz a lot, which was, um, you know, highly racialized and seen as uh, devious by mainstream white culture uh, at the time. <clears throat> um, but I mean, yeah, the, the beat generation was really like anti-authoritarian, anti-establishment, challenging um, the mainstream, um, you know, rejecting conformity, um, being different was a major priority, you know, cultural priority, um, not being anti-consumerist or anti-materialism, you know, was a major part of it. Um, all those things kind of like really drove it, right? Sex and drugs, you know, experimenting, you know, and, and this coming post-World War II, you know, was a major uh, revolutionary cultural change um, in, the in the United States. Now, part of the beat generation was Ken Kesey. You should know who the fuck this, this dude is. Um, he's probably most famous for writing One, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. There's a statue to him uh, in downtown Eugene. Uh, he's a, you know, a, local, a local icon um, in, in this town. He went to the University of Oregon, etc. And he was a major, 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 um, you know proponent him and the merry pranksters of acid of uh, body drugs self-exploration i mean they have their farm out here um all that stuff and you know ken kesey's really in the merry pranksters who a, a bunch of them are still actually like wavy gravy i think is still alive all these like you know i i don't even, i don't even know what to necessarily call them i i guess we could call them like hippies um like pre-hippies but but they were really like set the the cultural precedent for the, what would become you know the hippie ideology and most of them are and became hippies but is before there was like that definition to sort of define them but um you know they did like the acid test you know um the kool-aid acid test where like keezy and the merry pranksters they drove their bus and sometimes they bring out the bus I believe they bring out the bus and drive it around Eugene, um, or at least they used to. I can't rem I can't remember now, but um, you know they drove this bus around the country and basically gave people Kool Aid laced with acid, um, and not to like <laughs> drug them or anything, but to introduce them to to uh, to acid and LSD, um, you know, at the time because it was still I think at the time not quite a illegal drug. Um, other movements that kind of influenced uh, the hippies were the civil rights movement, uh, movements of the 50s and 60s, um, free speech movements, uh, the new left movements in the early 60s, a lot of the countercultural movement um, in uh, France uh, and Europe at, at the time also had an influence, um, you know, um, but a lot of this and a lot of the counterculture um, all across the world really originated on college campuses. Uh, you know, um, 
with certain, you know, professors um, and students, you know, and lots, I mean, we're talking about really incredible student protests, um, violent maybe student protests, uh, you know, so, um, but again, a lot of this came from college campuses, you know, educated, uh, mostly white, uh, kids, you know, um, at least initially, you know, 